really am getting tired. I should find somewhere comfortable to sit down, rest my legs for a few minutes. Wake up, child. <sighs> Sorry, I guess I fell asleep. What time is it? It is morning. We need to clean before we open for breakfast, so I had to wake you. I slept right through the party? It seems so. You did not stir even when everyone was leaving. Oh well, I feel pretty good considering. You look a little pale, but it's nothing a good porridge won't fix. Assorted bottles and spices and herbs. Back rooms are both empty. Not to sound rude, but I've had my fill of her for the moment. Do you intend to walk about in that outfit, child? It is day, it would not be proper. It's all I have. Come, we will find something more suited to a young lady about the city. How do I look? Well, it'll have to do for now. You do not have the most womanly of forms, but I'm certain you will fill out in time with the right diet. Thanks. Thank you for the clothes, for everything. You will have time aplenty to thank me while you are cleaning plates and cutlery, child. I'm sorry. Work? Those clothes do not come free, child, nor does a night spent sleeping before the fire. I'm not asking much, only for a helping hand in cleaning. All right. Tell me where to start. You can start carrying in the mugs from the back room. You did good work for me today, child. More than was required. Here you are. Some coin to help you out. And keep the clothes. You seem to have grown into them already. I got a whole handful of these Arcadian iron coins. Square jaw and broad shoulders. A real farm boy. Quite a sexy one, too. I wonder if she's caught anything today. That's a funny looking animal. Good beast. His hide feels like a turtle's, it's softer. <laughs> Yeah, good boy. Good boy.
It's a flower bed. There's plenty of room for more seeds to be planted in there. It looks to have been carved out of a large tree, but the texture of the house is more stone than bark. Enter, honored guest, and I would have been with you presently. Some of them look to be in English, but I know they're not. It's the Alton language Tobias told me about. The tongue of magic. Sounds a little disgusting, to be honest. It's a nicely crafted bench. Be welcomed, stranger, to my abode. Stranger? Don't you remember me? You invited me here. Every moment we meet, and every moment we part, you are both stranger and friend, April Ryan. I'm sorry, but could you try to be a little less obtuse this time? I have a hard time understanding half of what you say. I will beg for your forgiveness, April Ryan. I had a hard time to make myself understood amongst other peoples. I will pull myself into this moment, difficult as it may be, so that we can communicate and so that you may understand. It is important that you understand, April Ryan, very important. Who are you? I am Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the Ired Council in Mercuria. My people live far from here, and they do rarely visit your kind, and so I am their sole link to humans and Dolmari. Why is that? I alone among the Venar am able to focus on a particular moment and thread in time, and so to speak with those who flow with time, like you. How do your people perceive time? It is hard to explain. Any moment before this moment and any moment after is the same to me as this one. I have lived already and I am yet to live. Do you understand me? I think so, but how's that possible? Everything is possible, April Ryan. There is magic and there is science, and between the two, everything is possible. Can you see the future? To me, every moment is the same. There is no future. I can relate moments you have yet to see, and I can unravel possible threads. But remember, the future I see may not be the one into which you walk. Moments and threads fluctuate, change. I can remember things that have never come to pass, and I have seen things that will never be. So you can't tell the future? I would see your possible futures, the likely threads among hundreds. If there was not a veil in time, I would. What's this veil you keep talking about? Somewhere ahead, in our path, there is a dark veil through which I cannot pass, past which I cannot see. It is disconcerting to me to be blocked from the moments of my life. How did this veil come to be? It was, no, will be created in chaos, by chaos, to keep the future hidden, 
All threads converge on a single point here, beyond the veil, and this will happen only once it is written. Written? Where? In the prophecies. Tell me about the prophecies. Words have been written by seers who can discern from all possible threads the threads that are certain to be woven. These words are the prophecies. And what do the prophecies say? Prophecies speak of a time when the balance will falter, weakened by the assault of chaos and its servants. The moment the veil falls is the moment of uncertainty. The balance may stand, the balance may fall. I cannot tell which it will be, and I cannot even see the possibilities, the threads extending from each fork. But the prophecies also speak of a savior, as the prophecies usually do, one who will bring order to chaos, only to release chaos on the innocent, one who will restore the balance, only to finally break it. That doesn't sound like a savior. The word in my tongue is Kanang La. Literally translated, it means the small seed who grew to a tall tree. I need some help in my quest. Yes, you did. I did? And what did you answer? that I will help you as much as I can, but in the end... I'm on my own. I've heard that one before. Have you heard of a disc that works as a key to the Guardian's realm? Yes, but very little. It has been spoken of in the I Read Council only recently, brought to attention by the Tyran Ambassador, he wished to know where it is kept. And what was the answer? No one at the council knows or admitted to knowing, and the ambassador was asked to speak with the sentinel, which he is unlikely to concede to. The tyrant are allied with the vanguard, and so are in political and ideological opposition with the sentinel. I know Vestrum Tobias. He would not speak a word with the Tyran, nor the vanguard. Not unless it was to challenge their philosophies. So you don't know where I can find the disc? No. Ask Vestrum Tobias. Do you know anything about a rift leading to the Guardian's realm? I have heard speak of such a thing. I believe it was where the tower was built and the divide created. When the earth was one, it might still be open. Any idea where it is? I am afraid the Venar were never very involved in the affairs of the Sentinel, nor took any part in the Divide except to agree to the necessity of it. We had little choice but to concede. We are a magical people. We need the balance, because we would not, could not, survive without magic. What do you know about dragons? I do not know much about the kin, but I do know a little. Perhaps it will help you, perhaps not. The Dryak kin came to this world a very, very long time ago, before the dawn of man, before the divide. The Venar had yet to learn to be outside time, and there were few other peoples on earth. The kin played an important part in the divide, in separating magic from science, and in the founding of the fathers, the sentinel, to watch over the balance. 
It is said that after the divine of the four dryad kin that came to earth, two went to Stark and two to Arcadia. But that was a long time ago, twelve thousand of your years. I do not know what has become of them since. 